Alrighty, welcome back to the big board and all that good stuff. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. So the Battle of the Alma, right? GDW, 1978. That makes it 44 something years old, something like that. Uh, the sucker's old. And uh, I'm curious about this game because... It's, uh, it's, it's odd. It's, uh, it's set, you know, it's got that classic, uh, generic, well, I won't say generic, but simple three color, uh, map, uh, layout of the time, thin counters and all that simple, all the simple things that were good about that era, the, the late seventies, early eighties, a nice simple rule set which is in grand total, including the charts on the back page. I don't think the pages are even numbered. No, they're not, but uh, what's that? Two, four, eight pages, right? Uh, so it's relatively simple. However, it, for its simplicity, there are lots of little things missing that I think would have made this a much more approachable game. Uh, and maybe a, bit, a little bit of a better simulation. I don't even know if this is a great battle to try and simulate, but we're dealing with stuff at a uh, 30, uh, 30 minute uh, t uh, turn. We're 300 meters of hex. We're doing battalions and regiments. Now let me just mute my phone so that it doesn't uh, go crazy here. Sometimes when those Facebook messages, threads get going, it, all you hear is bing. So it's it's odd, and I'm wondering how many people actually ever played this game, not because it's broken or not because it's massively flawed, just that there's lots of little things that I, I look at and I go, eh, <laughs> is that right? And so I'm playing this game and I'm just, you know doing all the bits and pieces you need to do, and we'll talk about all that in a sec. And uh, And I'm thinking, that can't be right. And so I go back to the rule and I reread the rule and I look for exceptions and I look for other places where something else might be referenced about advancing after combat, for example. And I can't find anything. I'm like, okay, it, the words are what they say. And it's Frank Chadwick and Frank Chadwick writes really very clean and pretty terse rules. And they usually mean exactly what they say. So this must be the way it's played. And uh, I, it really gave me pause in a couple of different areas. So let's talk about the first one. The first one was advancing after combat. The rules specifically say, and I may as well just look them up and read them out, and then maybe this will click for me as I do it, as, as is so often the case. Uh, post Malay, the victor, uh, if he is the attacker, let's see. Movement after combat. Attacking units which charge a hex may occupy it if, as a result of fire or melee combat, or as a result of morale checks, it is vacated by enemy units. Now, when you go and think, okay, well, charge. Well, infantry can charge. Well, not really. Cavalry charge. And in the rules, it says, when you're doing the, uh, the melee uh, resolution phase, you determine the uh, the morale for the cavalry. The charging unit or units must check their morale to determine blah 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 if they can charge home. Uh, if any if any cavalry units do charge home, so they use all this charging terminology, right? Now, in, in, there's this morale determination phase that you do prior to actually executing the combat. And then it says morale determination in brackets for infantry. The following procedure is used: forces on both sides each. Side each perform a pre morale check by rolling, uh, blah 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 blah. Nowhere in there does it talk about uh, charging. And here it is, I just found it. The French are charging with three units with morale factors four, four. So they are using the word charge in the infantry rules. Then it says above the attack. Well, I am going to take that tiny word and use that as 
an example that here we could indeed advance after combat because they were charging according to the way the rules are worded in one instance of an example. So it's not clear, right? Now, and I, I know that uh, there was a long pause there and all the rest of it, but I could have just paused the, <laughs> stopped the video and started re-recording this. But this is the sort of thing that you, know, you come across in games and sometimes you've just got to verbalize it before you realize what the hell you're doing wrong, I guess. All right, let's uh, let's continue down the down the line here. These guys could also then have advanced into that hex, so that's good. And that means back down here uh, with the Brits, we may have missed a couple of uh, a couple of a couple of advances after combat, but that's okay. All right, so that's one thing. So the other the other interesting thing about the rules, and we'll talk about some of the mechanics because the mechanics are really somewhat interesting. Uh, Chadwick has this thing about morale and, and overall effectiveness of units, and he tends to use those types of rules, if it's not efficiency ratings, it's morale ratings, or whatever the case may be, to really impact the game, and he's done that here with this as well. Now, there's another rule here where uh, you retreat, if, you, uh, if you're... Uh, there can be a combat result where you retreat, you, you retreat two hexes, but if you route, you retreat the movement points. So uh, you move your units away using movement points at the full movement of the unit. And some of these hexes, these hex sides, where are we down here in the camera, uh, can be six or seven movement points, right? Uh, which means that they'll only move one hex because that's all the movement points they have. Uh, so you'll only retreat on a route one hex, but on a regular retreat, you'll retreat two hexes versus one hex of worth of movement points. I found that to be a little bit interesting. I'm probably not going to go look that up because I'm probably doing that wrong as well. But uh, we'll, uh, you know, bygones, right? Uh, so there's that. Now let's talk about the game, the, the parts of the game that I think that are pretty interesting. And how is this, how, how is all this reflected in this sort of era where linear combat, classical era combat is uh, on its way out Weapons are becoming more effective. We've got the telegraph. We've got rail. We've got things like that going on. The rate of fire is increasing and the accuracy is increasing and the range is increasing. And so uh, this is one of the last European battles where we'll see column charges. Uh, the Brits are fighting in line so they don't lose as many guys uh, when they're taking artillery barges, uh, barges, barrages. And uh, it's two, so we've got two different styles of combat going on right here. Russians doing their, they're pretty much all fighting with muskets, which is not really reflected in the game at all. Uh, and then you've got the Brits and the French who are using uh, more modern weapons. I forget the names of the specific weapon types, but they have greater range, more accuracy, and all that sort of good stuff. So uh, that's also really not. <clears throat> reflected in the in the combat values of the units it's marginally reflected with it you know like these guys might have a three for their combat value if we look at these guys here so uh you know they've got a three for their fire value a one for their uh let's try and get focused in on here a one for their uh, melee value and a four movement rate right um whereas most i guess most of the Regiments of the Russians are two rated units uh, and one rated unit. So I suppose there is a, a subtle difference here in terms of capacity. Uh, yeah, here we go. So look, here's a battalion, which is significantly smaller than a regiment. It's got a, it's got a combat fire value of four versus, versus uh, one or two for the, the Russians. So it is kind of factored in. So that's nice. Uh, so... Difficult terrain in the Crimea. Uh, we've got these steep hills and uh, challenging terrain. The Russians really didn't do much to set up other than build a couple of little redoubts and stick some cannons in them. Raglan, who ran the Brits, was one of these chaps that just was very agreeable and didn't want to get into arguments and really wasn't much of a, a tactician or a leader. So he just sort of fuddled along while the French dude had, I think he had cholera and was dying of cancer. And he was looking for some glorious end to his life that was going to happen in any any moment. 
and wanted to uh, redeem himself a little bit. It universally reviled both inside and outside of France and inside and outside of the army. Uh, so not a particularly popular person. Uh, so neither of these two chaps uh, were very effective and the communication was poor between the two forces. None of that really plays out here. You can pretty much do what you want with the units once you're on the map. So with the Russians, first thing I've done is I've moved all the cavalry <coughs> that was over on the, the, the Russian right flank, pushing it over into the center or possibly over to here, uh, all the way over to this right flank by the ocean uh, to try and uh, slow down the French because there's nothing there. Uh, it's pretty sad. And there's a couple of fords in here that we're trying to get across and all the rest of it. I'm going to come up these sort of these drawers or these little valleys and, uh, you know, if you go up here, it's been a, just a mess. It's been very difficult to, as, as I've gone through the exercise of uh, the, the sequence of play, dealing with the uh, the situation here because there's uh, it's hard to get fa enough factors on point to uh, dislodge units. But it can happen, even with a, a D6 spread. So... Okay, what was uh, going to be the next thing I wanted to share with you about this that was interesting? Uh, so, victory conditions, that's right. The victory conditions are odd in that all you've got to do is have more than uh, two or more non adjacent units on the Alma River, right? Or across it. We've pretty much achieved that at the moment. Like I could move this one guy here, uh, down there, and have him separated. But I think it's actually on the river anyway. So we've got forces coming across the river here. We're well across here, even though it's we're not up onto the the redoubts, and we're not uh, deeply in here. We are we are going to be able to do that pretty handily, but. And I don't know. I don't know if it's possible for the Russians to counterattack. As you can see, there's a number of white-faced units that are they're all moving to the left and off the map. And I've got a couple of guys off map who have already succumbed uh, to uh, to combat anyway. So they they've lost uh, they've lost three five units. They may recover these these three. There's a rally phase. We've got one that uh, the one that's routing. We'll, we'll recover him because I think he's a six or a five. So he'll order if he's a six. No, he's a four. He'll automatically recover if he's a six. He won't recover on a four automatically. Obviously enough, got to be careful because I don't have plex to put down here. It's in storage, and this is a very warped uh, little paper map. It's been in a small box for a long time. So how does combat work, and how does this morale thing all kind of? Uh, dovetail together when you're firing so the, the sequence of play is you move you rally you offensive fire defensive fire then you have melee and then the other side gets to do its bit right uh, so there's a sequencing to getting in place and if you move or, or if you're a horse artillery move more than half you don't get to fire in the turn so you can rush up and be adjacent to folks They'll get the defensive fire at you. You won't get the offensive fire at, at them. So you've got to be able to stay in position to the next turn if you want to shoot at them. But you will get a chance to melee them in the melee phase or the assault phase, whatever they want to call it. Uh, so when you move adjacent, let's uh, zoom in down here and we'll kind of run through something real quick here. Uh, artillery, and uh, just uh, by the by, artillery's uh, combat firepower is degraded as we go along. Uh, each, each, you've got to be, uh, it's got a range of three hexes, and for each hex out, you minus two uh, from the firepower, so that's how that'll work. Uh, for, for a melee, we use these melee values, and we're going to take, uh, so that'll be two factors attacking one factor, it'll be a plus one differential, but then we're going to look at the morale, average morale, so it's going to be five plus four is nine. Divided by two is four and a half, rounded up to a five. These guys are a three, and they'll stay a three because they're the only, the only guys in the hex. But if I had an artillery, these artillery morales are terrible. Uh, if I had a, a good artillery unit, I could boost this up, right? But what happens then is we roll a d6 each. So let's just say the Brits rolled a six, and 
the these guys rolled a two. Uh, so I said they had a, an average of four and a half, five. So that would be 11 and three plus two is five. So that would be a uh, six differential between these two units. This guy has a morale of three. It's less than the than the differential, so they are not going to stand and fight. They're going to say, we're out of here. The odds don't look good. Off we go. Now, keep in mind that there is actually a, a degradation of this guy's morale because he's on a slope, right? So he would have been a three, and this would be a five. So it'd be eight. So there'd be actually be a four. It's still going to be higher, the net difference with the die rolls. This will still be higher than this number. So he, he would route off the map, or not off the map, but route away uh, four movement points. So we'd flip over and you go one hex to there. Uh, so that's how that works. Uh, firing is uh, interesting in that, and I haven't quite quite worked out why it's the way it is yet. It, it hasn't, hasn't settled in my little tiny brain here. But if these guys were going to fire at this guy, we would tally up these points, six factors. And then, then we take, we look at the Malay value, subtract one from it, which when it makes it zero, right? And whatever that delta is, let's say I had, uh, where's a dude that has more than one? Very few units have a one. Here's a guy. So I had this guy here, right? So three minus one leaves two. I'm going to add two to the die roll for these guys. So it's going to be six factors attacking. I'm going to roll a d6 and add two. The higher the number, the worse the result, right? So I, uh, so there's really no malice if you're a, what I would call a regular unit, but if you're somewhat of a really good uh, melee fighter, uh, then you may uh, you you may suffer. Maybe it's because you're more densely packed or something like that. I don't know. Uh, it seems like all the Frenchies have mole, mo, morale, uh, sorry, Malay ratings of two, pretty much. So I think that's trying to reflect the column style attack they they do. So maybe that's what that is. Uh, and hence the density and therefore when you're firing at them it's going to cause more more drama more problems when you fire at artillery you got to add plus four so obviously that uh, that makes it harder for you to hit the artillery and, and, and knock them out and that's kind of the game that's it right uh, the, the, the two ways you fight I haven't done a cavalry charge yet because you can't charge on up hills and all that sort of nonsense so no charge to the light brigade yet uh, we'll get at it uh, in a minute. It's the top of turn four. I thought I'd share that with you. It's a long video, and I know you, you know, ninety-nine percent of you guys and girls aren't going to watch it, but I, I wanted to just cover it off a little bit. I think someone else has played this and done a review. I haven't watched it yet. I think it might be Cent Centurion's review. I think that's what he calls his channel. It might be worthwhile you have a look at this and have a look at his uh, gameplay or his uh, review and seeing what the differences are. I usually don't watch other people's reviews of games because I don't want it to color my impressions of uh, what you know what I'm experiencing and seeing. I'll give it. I'll give this game this. It's uh, it's a tight, compact set of rules. There's only a couple little niggles with it in terms of things that weren't particularly clear to me. And as we just saw, I I, I missed the one word charge for infantry in the example, but it's not stated in the rules. Would have been nice for that to be in the rules. The retreating thing is an issue. I don't know with stacking if I retreat and land on and finish up on top of uh, one of my guys that uh, if I'm overstacked or, or not, is that a bad thing? Do I keep retreating or am I eliminated? I don't know. It's not uh, not taken care of in the rules. I could, you know, I could see it either way. I could keep moving him and retreat him or I could uh, allow him to stack and fix it at the beginning of the next turn, you know. If I, and also, if I'm routing through my guys, does anything happen? There's no mention of anything about that either that I'm aware of anyway in the uh, in the rule book. Uh, there's your little terrain chart. There's your combat results table. I'll, I'll, zoom, I'll zoom out a little bit for you for that. So there you have that. And it all folds over and goes in the box in this little this little box here. Uh, you know, we're not we're not doing a big review and unboxing thing. It's just it is what it is. So uh, on to turn four, talk to you soon. Keep rolling those dice, okay?